I did not want to wake up this morning. <laughs> Supposedly it's raining this morning. Let's see if it's actually raining. Eh, just a little bit, it's not too bad. <laughs> the roads are a little bit slick this morning, but not too bad. Monday morning is easily the easiest morning to wake up and get stuff done because you feel fresh and you feel relaxed from the weekend. But this morning is Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning is way harder, way harder to get up for. It's harder because on Monday we just go so hard. You know, we got three workouts. We go really hard in weights in the morning and really hard in brush road practice in the afternoon. So after like five hours of training on Monday, Tuesday morning is a little bit painful. But you know, it's all about little victories. Like when I get out of bed in the morning and I get moving when I don't want to, especially after how tired I am from Mondays working out, I feel good. When I get out of the pool after my workout, knowing that I didn't want to do it, I always feel that sense of gratification. They're like small victories. Cause there's all these things that you need to do in order to get better. And sometimes you don't want to do them. But when you do, you know you're making progress. And I like that. This morning was one of those mornings. <laughs> Flip it. This is like an extreme close up right now. No, I zoomed out. I zoomed it's out. Too early. Let's be clear about one thing. Lily set two American records within the last like four days NCAA records, which is basically world records for short course yards, and she's back at it. Winners don't take days off, right, Lily? Yeah. That's what all the kids need to hear. Yep. <laughs> Off, <laughs> She's so excited to be here as you can see. Tuesday mornings are the true test of if you love swimming and what you want to do because they are terrible. <laughs> we just did our dynamic warm up. We always stretch every morning at like 5.45 right before we get in. And there's like no one here today because the men's team has gone at NCAAs. Do you know what the... tinkling is? What is tinkling? <laughs> what? You should look at it. I don't know. And the women's team just got back from NC, so they have a break, except for people like Lily, who don't take breaks. And so I've got this whole lane all to myself. Oh my god, we finished practice early. It's time for bagels. We did a full kick set. And coffee. And bagels. I was thinking about something while I was swimming, because I was talking to them earlier about how like sometimes you wake up and you just don't want to get up and you don't feel good. There's that little voice in your head that says like, don't get up or you don't want to do it. If you squash that voice, and you just go do it anyways, 100% of the time I feel better. Like I didn't want to do this practice, but now that we're done with this practice, like I feel better about it. We did good today. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's true though, like I like feel better about it now that I did it, even though like I like really did not want to do it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about during that set though, like that little voice pops in your mind. It's like, don't do it, don't do it. Or like, no. I'm sore, I don't want to do it, but just do it anyway, you know? <laughs> Never hit snooze. Never hit snooze. My hair looks luscious this morning. Oh, fuck. oh yeah. I'm done early this morning, so I've got all this time to take an extra long shower. The entire men's team is gone, so it's literally just me. When does this happen in the movie? Now. Done with my shower. Shh. I'm in the team room. Real quickly, look at how nicely they've organized these chairs. Look, look at how perfect it is. Like these things roll around, right? They're on wheels, so you can do anything, but it, it, look, it looks so nice. I've never seen it look that nice before. Anyway, I came in here because I was thinking about something while I was swimming. In my most recent vlog, I was talking about the three main things that college coaches look for in high school athletes when they're being recruited. By the way, if you haven't watched that vlog, I'll link it here. Go ahead and check that vlog out. I think it's a pretty good vlog. But while I was swimming, I was thinking about another big factor, something that I probably should have mentioned in the video, and I can't take credit for this. This is something that Allie, my wife, brought up. She's a lot smarter than I am. She's got all these really good ideas all the time. But she said another big factor for high school athletes is their relationship with their coach. 
coach. Because when you're being recruited by college athletes, the first person that those those coaches talk to about you, about the athletes, is their coach. So you want to make sure you have a good relationship with your coach, a good working relationship with your coach for many different reasons, obviously. But if you are seriously considering and wanting to be recruited by a collegiate coaches and swimming in college, then having a good relationship with your coach is critical. Think about it. If you've got a bad relationship with your coach and a college coach calls your coach and is like, hey, uh, tell me a little bit about Joe. And they're like, well, Joe shows up late. He's one of those guys with a lot of bad habits and his work ethic is so-so. They're going to write you off immediately. Now, that's like a drastic example. But my point is, if you've got some bad habits or some issues or you know, maybe not the best relationship with your coach and you're in high school or you're in middle school and you want to swim in college someday, work on those things now because those things will will affect you later on in your career. I think sometimes people have a tendency to undervalue their relationship with their coach when they're younger because they just don't really think about it. Um, but it's certainly really important, so keep that in mind, guys. Check this out. Let's see if we can go all the way across the room. I'm gonna take my coat off, I'm gonna get serious. Are you ready for this? This is so much fun. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of dizzy now. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here. I've got to be an adult. You don't ever really have to grow up. You have to have responsibilities, which I have today, but you don't have to grow up. I got it. Did you see that piece of food on my lip? Ah, got it. Please don't be raining. Please don't be raining. Please don't be raining. Please don't be raining. Ah, okay. It could be worse. It's not that bad. It's not that bad right now. Uh, a couple of days ago, someone tweeted at me and they were like, do you drive a sweet sports car because you're an Olympian? I'm like, no, I don't. I drive like a very average car. I drive the same car that I drove before I was an Olympian. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people ask me that. Like, I'm not really a car guy. I don't really need like a nice car. I'm also just not the type of person who needs a lot of nice things in general. Like I just, I don't have a whole lot of nice things. Like I don't need the newest shoes. I don't need the newest accessories. Like I'm pretty much a guy of like simple tastes. You know what I mean? Like most of the time I either spend my money on food or go into the movies and then I just save it. Cause I'd rather enjoy my life later on with my wife and kids. Um, once I get home, I'll show you how crappy this car really is. All right, I'm home. Let me show you a little bit about this car. It's nothing special. It's literally a car that we got pretty cheap several years ago. Uh, we actually got it for my sister who drove it in high school and when she graduated, I had it brought down here for me. But it's missing the passenger door handle. So this no longer exists. This happened because I was picking up my best friend, James, my roommate in college, James, this guy right here. Yeah, uh, really big dude, but I was picking him up and he opened the door and snapped off the handle. Just straight up snapped it right off. And we just kind of laughed about it. And then I tried to fix it, I tried to glue it back on, and then I just, I started opening the door for passengers when I drive people. I don't ever really drive people and I just never really fixed it. So, so yeah, so that's broken. And then we have a huge dent in the windshield right here. As you can see, it's pretty messed up. This was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. It's really dented on the other side too. So that accident happened about a year ago this time. I was driving to morning practice. It was like 5.30 in the morning. It was super dark out and it was storming. Like it was pouring really, really hard rain. I could barely see the road. And I was going down this hill. Like I was driving down this hill and it kind of bottomed out right here. So I'm driving down the hill and my lights are turned on and my lights are pointed down. And so all I can see is the bottom of the hill. And the second my car reached the part where we leveled out, my lights shot forward and I could see in front of me and right when my lights went here and I could see forward, I saw a hanging tree branch right in the middle of the road, just like dangling in the, in the middle of the road and I went right into it. I slammed on the brakes and skid right into it and it shattered my windshield. Like this thing exploded and there was glass everywhere. 
I was going pretty fast. Had I not actually seen the tree branch, like had my lights not caught it I w and not seen it, I would have drove right through it full speed and it probably would have gone all the way through. And I like, I, I probably could have died. I remember like hitting the tree and I was just, I was shaking. It was like the first real car accident that I'd ever been in and, and I didn't even know what happened. I like the second the tree, I collided with the tree, it's like everything went black. And oh my God, it was terrifying. I was fine, I didn't really hurt myself. I threw out my neck a little bit, but like nothing serious. And surprisingly, it didn't total the car. I, I, got, I got the frame uh, fixed, they bent it back into place and it's, it's still safe enough to drive. And it, it put, put a few cracks and dings in it, but it was okay. So there's a big crack right there, right in the foundation of the car. And it totally mangled this thing. Like this is all kind of messed up right here. But you know, it doesn't look pretty, but what, like I said, I don't really care about what my car looks like. It still drives, it's still safe to drive, and so it doesn't really, ma it doesn't really matter. After the Olympics, there certainly were some opportunities to get like some kind of sponsorships with like car companies or whatever, but like the biggest thing is they all needed me to go and do appearances, and I mean like multiple appearances a year. For me, I already have to travel a lot. I have to travel for competition, I have to travel for training purposes, I have to travel for sponsorship purposes, sponsorships that are very important to me that, that pay my bills and tacking on another six or seven weekends a year where I'm gone for three or four days at a time for like a car company just so that I could drive a slightly nicer car well like a new car but that like wasn't really worth it to me so it's just it's not something that I ended up doing um, so yeah that's why I still drive a super mediocre crappy car um, it's just it, it doesn't matter to me like I don't need crazy nice things and my time is something that I'm not willing to give up to drive a nicer car right now all right, I'm gonna go inside, gonna make some breakfast, wake up Allie, she doesn't have to work today. Um, one other thing, a lot of people have been commenting on like the movie posters in my garage. I am a huge movie fanatic. I love going to the movies. It's one of my favorite things to do. That's one thing that Allie and I bond over is going to the movies. But I surround myself with things that make me happy. Right, like I've got a Lord of the Rings poster, I've got a Harry Potter poster, I've got posters from some of my favorite movies, one of my favorite shows is Stranger Things right now. And the reason that I do that is because it, it like warms my heart to see those things because these things are so near and dear to me. And when I when I wake up in the morning and I, it's 5.30 and it's cold and I'm walking to my car and maybe I don't feel like going to practice but I see those things, it just makes me a little bit happy. I think it's important to surround yourself with things that make you happy. That's why Allie and I have a Harry Potter room. You know, we have a five piece Harry Potter Hogwarts castle canvas painting over our TV in our living room because we're total nerds. We don't care what anybody else thinks and those things just make us happy, you know? So don't be ashamed of any of those weird things. You know, I'm not, I'm not ashamed that I love Harry Potter and that I love nerdy shit. Like, that, those, those are things that make me who I am and make Allie who she is and make us who we are. And those things are important. That's why, like, it's all over my house, you know? I'm never really gonna grow up. So on that note, I'm gonna end this vlog. I'm gonna make another vlog right now um, that Allie and I are gonna do together. I'm like pretty excited about it. Uh, make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter, at Cody Miller on Instagram, and um, subscribe to this channel, share these videos, help my channel grow, and I'll see you guys in the next video.